Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Well, we're glad to have you this morning. Let's go ahead and get into the Bible. We are teaching on the subject of blood covenant. And, um, you know, some of you, obviously, some of you have not been here for some of the preceding messages. And, and um, we would encourage you to go back and listen to them online. Uh, to get you caught up with the background on this, we are in the process of working our way towards teaching on the authority of the believer. We're laying the foundation for that teaching by teaching on blood covenant, that we have a blood covenant with God, that, um, and, and that will be the basis by which we understand our authority as a believer is our covenant with God. So you'll, you know, you'll need to listen to that to get a better understanding of where we are. We're talking this morning uh, on Jesus, the fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant, and the surety of the new. Go, if you will, to the third chapter of the book of Galatians, which is where we will, we'll, we'll spend time in the whole chapter this morning. We had a good time over in Winston teaching this today. Uh, really good time. Glory to God. If you've got friends who live in Winston-Salem, um, let them know about Faith and Victory Church, Winston-Salem campus. We'd love to have them join us over there. Uh, praise the Lord. And uh, we're on the Clemens side of Winston. Glory to God. So I know, I know people on the east side of, of Winston could be just about as close to here as there. But, um, you know, feel free to uh, join us, have friends join us over there in Winston-Salem. We'd love to have them. Starting in the third chapter, verse 1, O foolish Galatians, I like the J.B. Phillips translations. It says, O ye dear idiots of Galatia. That just has always stuck with me. First time I read that out of J.B. Phillips' translation, I went, I like that. Oh, you dear idiots of Galatia. All right? Who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath evidently uh, set forth crucified among you? This only what I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you... Um, are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? He is in making reference to obedience to the Levitical law. The law that Moses received in the mount, this is, Paul says, are you made perfect by the works of the law. We are not talking about being doers of the word. We're not talking about that it's works for you to obey Jesus. It's not talking about it's works for you to submit to the will of God. We are talking about trying to become righteous by doing all the works of the law. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we need more chairs? Or we got enough chairs? Hey, guys. All right. Nice to have a problem like that, isn't it? Looking for me. Yeah, get around up here at the front so I can slap on you. How to not slap you, slap on you. How you doing? All right. Good to see you guys. Have you suffered to... I'll slap you now. That's my son. I can slap him. I told him I don't, I'm not as, I'm not as uh, uh, fast as I used to be and strong, so I'll just have to hurt him quick. <laughs> I ain't got time for any other stuff. Hallelujah. Now, have you suffered so many things in vain, if it yet be in vain? He that therefore ministereth to you the Spirit and working, worketh miracles among you, doeth it by the works of, uh, doeth it by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith are the same, or the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So they, they which be of faith, are blessed with faithful Abraham. Let's stop here for a second. Let's, let's look at this. Now, I said this in Winston this morning, and, and it's... it's, it's it's very accurate. You know, we, we, as faith people, word of faith churches, you know, rhema churches, you know, the, the, all that, we, we love the message of faith. But a lot of times we limit the scope of the message of faith to Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24, that you believe that you receive and you shall have. That really is the prayer of faith or really the prayer of believing and receiving. Okay? Now, I'm a rhema grad. I sat under Dad Hagen. He taught more than Mark 11, 23, 24. 22, 23, and 24. 
That was the keynote of his ministry because that's what God told him to do. But he taught more. And he taught more the perspective of faith than just believing and receiving. Okay? Because the act that Abraham performed that was the act of faith that we see in the Bible was the offering of Isaac. That was an act of willingness and obedience. Now Isaiah 119 says, If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Okay? We know that the reference there is not to some other uh, concept of the meaning of the words because the very next verse says, If you refuse and rebel. So will, see that refuse is against willingness. Rebel is against obedience. Amen? So the context here is if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Well, Abraham was asked of God after the covenant was made between them. Remember, God said, as for me, my covenant is with you and I am with your seed, and I'll bless you, bless them that bless you, and curse them that curse you. And then Abraham had to accept the, the, the conditions of the covenant. What was it? I'm going to bless you. I'm going to multiply you. You're going to submit and yield and come and yield to me. You're going to do the will of God. What did Paul say in Romans? He said that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, okay, what is Lord does not mean get away with anything you want to get away with. Lord means I am submitted to his will, to his dictates, his moral code, his demands, what he desires. I am, by confessing the lordship of Jesus, saying, I'm entering into this covenant on the basis that I'm going to do what you say do, the way you say you do it, and when you want it done. Now, you got a narrative in the church today that because there is a subject called grace, that I can do whatever I want to do, and God's grace is going to cover it because that's what his grace does. But see, that's, out, that's not covenant talk. Covenant talk is, God said, I'm going to do this. And in response to his, what he said he's going to do for me, I'm going to do this. And what am I going to do? I'm going to live the life of faith. See, they that are of faith are, are blessed with faithful Abraham. What do you mean the life of faith? See, the life of faith is not believing and receiving. That's the prayer of faith. That's how we receive from God by faith is the prayer of believing and receiving, which is Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. And it operates by the faith of God or the faith in God, okay? <clears throat> but the life of faith is a life of willingness and obedience. I said the life of faith is a life of willingness and obedience. You are willing to do what God says do, you're willing to go where God says go. You're willing to do what God says do. And then you obey and do whatever that is. Okay? And we see that in Abraham when God said after 13 years. Now remember, he came and said, you know, uh, I'm going to bless you and Sarah. And uh, he said, well, what? oh, if Ishmael could just live before you. We're, a little, we're getting a little tweaky hot on the speakers. Just a, just a tad. It's like a little edge off. That's, yeah, that's better. Hallelujah. Is that better out there? Because I could, I could hear it. All right. And so God says, no, I'll bless Ishmael, but the seed, the promise, and later he tells him to put Hagar and Ishmael out because they're not going to inherit the promise. And God says, in Isaac shall thy seed be. Well, in Isaac's about 13. God comes up one day and says, I want you to take your son, your only son, go up to the mountain, the place that I'll show you, offer him there for, on the altar to me. He says, what does Abraham do? Oh, God, no, I can't do that. You ask too much. No. They're covenant. They're in covenant. And in that strength of that covenant, whatever the one party asks of the other, they do it, and they do it without question. But here's the part of faith that changes the whole thing. Because the New Testament says that Abraham received Isaac raised from the dead in a figure. See, he knew the minute God said, take your son and offer him, that God had already given an oath that in Isaac shall your seed be. So the covenant-keeping God who cannot break covenant had already said Isaac is the one the seed's coming through. And so Abram knew, or Abraham knew this. 
He's going to have to raise him from the dead to keep his oath. And God's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So he knows that God, that God's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Isaac is who the seed's coming through. And if I take him up there, put him on that altar, slay him, and burn him, God's going to raise those ashes up and restore him to life. Yeah. So Abraham takes off in faith and obedience. That is the life of faith. I'm sorry, willingness and obedience. That is the life of faith. When you are living by faith, you are not trying to figure out what you can get away with and still get to heaven. Sorry! And stop preaching that stupid stuff. I know it gets money and people buy your books and your tapes because they, they get to do whatever they want to do, but that's not why we're in the ministry. If you love God, you hate sin. Then say you hate the sinner, you hate sin. You cannot love God and love sin. I'm getting more amens from the geese out there than I just got in here. All right? You know, the Word of God teaches us that we're to love God and hate sin. We're to eschew evil. Not look for how we can get away with it. But we turn on the preachers to tell us, yeah, man, God showed me the other day, you don't even repent when you sin. Really? Godly sorrow worketh repentance. If you're in covenant with God, it should bother you to sin. He didn't say you won't ever sin, because John said, if, if, I mean, James said, if any man sin, let him, you know, if any man sin. John said, if any man sin, it was 1 John 1, it's the first chapter. John said, if any man sin, we have an advocate. Didn't say when you sin, if. Meaning, we should be walking a life where we walk as far away from sin as we can get. You're not called to, to try to be like the world. Everybody wants to be like the world to win the world. Let me tell you something. Just because you went to prison don't mean you have a prison ministry. And just because you were a prostitute don't mean you have a ministry to, to the street people, to, to, to the prostitutes. The biblical example is God sends people to the people they're not qualified to minister to. Think about it. Who did Peter get sent to? The Jews. Who was more qualified to minister to Jews than anybody in the Bible? Paul. And who did he get sent to? The heathen. Why? Because you can't go in your, your abilities and what you think. You've got to go in the power and the anointing and the calling of God. Amen. And you see, when, when Paul was sent to the Gentiles, he was sent to a people that he was not qualified to minister. Boy, was he more qualified to minister to the Jews. He was a freeborn Jew. He studied at the feet of Gamaliel. I mean, he was a, I mean, he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was a Pharisee. I mean, he knew the law inside and out. I mean, he was the man. And God sent him to the heathen. None of that mattered. I said, none of that mattered. And then here's Peter, cussing Peter. Cutting guys' ears off at the capture of Jesus and all this kind of stuff. Remember, the soldiers came. He took the sword out and cut the guy's ear off. And Jesus made him go get it. Go get the ear. Bring it back over here. Blood and dirt and everything. Slapped it back up there. Healed the guy's ear. You, you, Peter's got to be going, I don't want to. I, I, really, I really enjoy cutting that ear off, Lord. And he, gets sent to, he gets sent to the Jews. He's a fisherman. And we know he wasn't real bright. I'm sorry. The Bible says when they brought them in to, to, to question him, they took note of them. They were ignorant and unlearned men. But they'd been with Jesus. So he wasn't real bright. Oh, I just throw the fish over here, the fish over there. I mean, old foot and mouth disease Peter. I mean, you know. So just because, you know, just because you, you know, you got caught stealing doesn't mean you're the minister to the thieves. You could, but it doesn't mean you are. Amen? Now, and also, we've got to come back. We've got to understand, we are not called to live a life where we're trying to get away with stuff. I'm in covenant with God through Jesus Christ. In that covenant, Jesus loves God the Father and hates sin. I love God and hate sin. 
And my life of faith, the life of faith, the just shall live by faith. Four times in Scripture, three times in the Old Testament, one time in the New, or two, actually there's more times in the New. One time, no, three times in the New. It says that the just shall live by faith in some form. The just shall live by faith. We're to live by faith. And that life of faith is the life of willingness and obedience. And so God tells Abram, or Abraham, get on up that mountain, boy. And so he packs up the wood, the fire, the boy. They're heading up the mountain. And Isaac looks over about halfway up and says, hey, Dad, where's the sacrifice? And, and, and Abe says, uh, the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. <clears throat> so they get up there, build the altar. And Isaac looks around, and here comes Dad with the rope. You've got to know, he's thinking, this is not looking real good for me today. Hello? Binds him, puts him on there, draws the back, the angel cries out, don't do it! And then God says, it's because you withheld not your son, your only son. In blessing, I'll bless you. In multiplying, I'll multiply you. And I said this last week, I'll say it again. Isaac was the faith seed of Abraham that allowed God to send Jesus as our harvest. Jesus is the harvest of Abraham's faith in Isaac because he received him raised from the dead in the figure. And because he didn't withhold his son in the covenant. This is the covenant. Remember, the name Abraham was a covenant name. He had a change of name entering into a covenant with God. One of the things that Stanley Livingston found when traveling across Africa back in the 1800s was this, that when they cut covenant, names were exchanged. And see, Abram became Abraham. God became the God of Abraham. But because the covenant was perpetual to a seed after that and a seed after that, he eventually became known as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There was a change of name for God. Why? Because it signified, it's not just a cool name. I am the God of Abraham. No! When he, that is said, it's a covenant name. And what is Abraham called? The friend of of God. The word used for friend in the Greek is an Eastern. I mean, understand, the Bible is not a Western book. It's an Eastern book. And so that phrase, that word in, in Eastern thought actually meant blood covenant partner. So when Abraham's called the friend, he's called the blood covenant partner of God. God is in blood covenant with Abraham and to his seed. And in that seed, all nations were to be blessed. And when I am in Christ, and I am in, I mean, that I'm a partaker of the blessing and the covenant of Abraham with God, I will not be looking for ways to sin and get away with it. With some screwy doctrine, teaching, that allows you to do it and get away with it and send them the money and buy more books. You love God, you hate sin. Sin is repulsive because it dishonors and displeases the Father. And why does God hate sin so much? It separates. Sin cannot stand in His presence. That is why always between us and the Father is the mercy seat. And when we come boldly to the throne of grace, between us and the Father is where Jesus' blood is. It's on the mercy seat. We never can enter into his presence except based on the fact that we're under the blood. And his blood cleanses us. But sin will separate you conscientiously. It'll, it'll, it'll put a barrier on your end between you and God, and you can't go into his presence with that sin. You gotta, it's got to be cleansed. So I'm in covenant with God, and that covenant provides me a means whereby I can be reconciled when I do sin. Amen. All right. Verse 10. For as many as of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Curses everyone that continueth not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Verse 11. It is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Now, the, basically, the law says this. If you break one, you're guilty of all of it. Now, there's like 3,000 or more ordinances. That means you can keep 2,999. That's right, 99. It's like, it's on sale for 999. 
It's ten dollars, folks. You get gas at one twenty-one nine. How many of you can pay nine tenths of a cent when you go in? Yeah, those. Yeah, that's a little gig they got going on. It's, it's one thirty. It's one eighty-five nine. You know, Sheets is ripping everybody off in Greensboro. It's cheaper in High Point. It's like eleven cents a gallon cheaper at the High Point Sheets than it is at the Greensboro. Yeah, thieves. Anyway. I didn't say that. Don't say that. Repent. All right. But if you break that one, you're guilty of all 3,000. And what was that? You can't earn your righteousness. You can't get there. You can't achieve it in anything you do. You can be really, 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 really good today and mess up one time, and you're guilty of the whole law. That's why Jesus had to come and redeem us so we can be in Christ so that by, we live a life of faith in the relationship with God through God and the covenant between God and the man Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. We're in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And by that, we're able to access living by faith. And if we mess up, thank God, there's repentance and there is covering and there's a washing of the blood. I got an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the faithful judge who will sit there and plead my case based on his blood. So if I come in going, Lord, I messed up. Blood! And all the Father can see is sitting on the other side is the blood of Jesus. Amen. But if I don't, listen. If I don't repent, my conscience will convict me and condemn me. You know, John said this. People say, there's no con yeah, you're never condemned in Christ. No, God doesn't condemn you. But John says this, if our heart condemns us not, then have we confidence towards God. Your heart will. And then you've got people trying to teach you not to let your heart condemn you. No, stupid. Did I say that? Idiot. With a French accent, it sounds better, doesn't it? Idiot. Or family Bush, you're stupid. Anyway, I still say you're stupid. <laughs> en français. But it just sounds better in French, doesn't it? Family Bush. Melanie, just, just don't even say anything. She said, I heard her crank the bus up. I hear a little beep, beep, beep. She's giving me a backup on me. I'll, anyway. No. When your heart condemns you, it's saying, hey, you're, 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 you're doing things that are outside your covenant with the one you're, in, you're supposed to be in covenant with, repent. Get it cleaned up. Why? Because God wants to do all kinds. God, listen, I got people saying stuff like that. I hear these narratives. God's going to bless me financially no matter what because I'm under grace. Did you know that Paul wrote and said that you, you reap according to that which you sow? Paul said that in the New Testament. To the church at Corinth, he said that. And he said, he that sows sparingly reaps sparingly. He that sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. Let me add this to it. And he who soweth nothing getteth nothing. If you don't sow, you don't get a harvest. If Abraham had not offered Isaac on the, at the altar and received him raised from the dead in a figure, Jesus wouldn't have had that venue to come through. That was the faith seed. And that's why God made that covenant with Abraham. Thank God for the covenant with Abraham. Amen. I said, thank God for the covenant with Abraham. And he said this, and in thy seed shall all nations be blessed. Well, let's keep going. The law is not a faith, but the man that doeth him shall live in him. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it's written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Why is he, why is he redeemed us from the curse? Now, the law itself is a curse because no one can do it. No human can can live up to every dictate of the law. How many went out yesterday and did something? How many got more than like a mile from your house yesterday? Raise your hand. If you got more, further than a mile, from, you broke the law. Because see, yesterday is the Sabbath. That was, it was, at that time, it was the Sabbath. If you went more than a mile on that day, you broke the law. Law breakers! Going to go to hell! Ah! No, we're, but thank God we're broken from the curse of the law. That's a command. I'm telling you right now, because I went to the grocery store about six times. It's a mile and a half from my house to the grocery store. Getting hot dogs. Went to Sam's. Got all the stuff to make hot dogs and hamburgers with. You know, we make it. Got about oh, eight pounds of chili. Hot dog chili. 
hot hamburger too that we made. Our, my wife's special homemade recipe. Yeah. Slap it on your dog, baby. Mm. Going to have some church now. Ha! Glory to God. <laughs> my God. Yeah. <laughs> but why, is, why did he hang on the tree? Why did he break the curse? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles' hell through Jesus Christ, and that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulled or addeth to. In other words, he's saying this. Even men, if it's confirmed when they make a covenant, it can't be broken. Now to Abraham and to his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, plural, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. God made we have a natural covenant with Israel. God does. Abraham and his natural covenant. God still honors it. I said, God still honors it. If you don't believe me, go ask all the Muslims that want to kill them. They can't take them out. They still remember 1967. Six days, they got their back in whooped. They all decided we're going to take Israel out. We're going to, we're, you know, because Israel had come back in 1948. They came back to the homeland and reestablished as a nation. And then the Muslims weren't happy. All the nations around them weren't happy. So they come up. We're going to go take them out. They plan a, they plan a, a surprise attack. And they got surprised during the attack. They show up, and in six days, they are whooped and lost a bunch of land. They come to wipe Israel out, and Israel got bigger. I'll bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. I have a friend who, who grew up in Jordan. He, he knew people who fought in the Six-Day War, and they told him, he said, when we came over the dunes, there were millions of soldiers on the dunes. There weren't millions of Jews to fight. God sent his angels because he, he, he has a covenant with Abraham. Okay? But the ultimate covenant that God was after was a spiritual covenant. Now, let me, if God is that committed to his natural covenant, what do you think he is to a spiritual covenant? He said, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant which was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul or should make the promise of none effect. So notice you know, he said before this, he said that if a man makes a covenant, it can't be, and it's confirmed, it can't be disannulled. God made one with Abraham 430 years before the law, and the, the law could not disannul that promise that God gave to Abraham. Amen. God made a promise to Abraham. If we can get back to covenant thinking, which we really need to do, that we're in a covenant with God, through Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the seed of Abraham. And God made the covenant with Abraham and to his seed. Now, I'm, going, I'm just going to cheat. I'm going to jump down to verse 29. And if you be Christ, that is possessive. Apostrophe as Christ. Then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I'm in covenant with God, and it is the covenant God gave to Abraham and to his seed. And Jesus is the seed. The law was added just to keep people in, in check long enough to get Jesus here. So we can live by faith and not by sight. Our lifestyle of faith is a lifestyle of faith, of, of, of obedience and willingness. God said, if, you, if you're willing and obedient, or you know, if, if Abraham's act was an act of willingness, and an act of obedience, and that is faith. That's a lifestyle of faith. Not, not the prayer of faith, believing and receiving. We're trying, I'm trying to differentiate here. Now listen, I sat under Dad Hagen, and every time he opened it and taught our class at Rama, he turned to Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. Every single day that he taught, which I think was three days a week we had him. Three days a week we had Dad Hagen the whole year. No, one, one period it was three, the next it was two, then the second year students it reversed, Okay. So for the year, 3232, three, two. Dad Hagen got to sit under his ministry. Every single time he opened up 
in Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. And occasionally 25 and 26 because you had to get people walking in love too. Okay? They got out of love, you had to teach them 25 on, on uh, if you stand praying, forgive. Because some folks can get in unforgiveness. Like right now, you bring up politics, some folks get in unforgiveness in a hurry. I'm telling you, they get, they get, they get mean, nasty, and ugly. As Christians, now here's what I'm going to say about politics. As Christians, we have an obligation to vote in accordance with biblical principles, not party affiliation. Just because you like a certain party or their economic policies, I don't vote because of economic policies. I vote because of righteousness and unrighteousness. I do. That's how I vote. I vote righteousness and unrighteousness. And I, I, cannot, I cannot vote for candidates who are pro-abortion. I cannot do it. I cannot condone the murder of unborn children. I cannot do it. I don't care what the economic policy is. God's going to take care of me financially. God's my source. God makes, meets my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, not according to what party is in charge. But I cannot vote for murder. I can't vote for ungodliness. I can't do it. It's not right. As a Christian, how can, how can I sentence children to death? How can I do it? I can't. I'm not telling you who I'm voting for, who I'm voting against, or what I'm voting for, what I'm not. I'm going to tell you, I, I remember a few years ago, there was, was, one party, first party had a pro, pro-abortion. I don't believe in pro-choice, pro-abortion candidate. The other party had a pro-abortion candidate. I thought, well, my God, what am I going to do if both of them win their primaries? I'll, I'll be writing in my name, Ed for president. Because <laughs> I can't vote for either one of them. Maybe I'll win. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> so, I'm going to live a life of obedience and, and willingness to God. That, now listen, that means my, my lifestyle, my life choices, my life decisions are based on, is it pleasing to God? And I am willing to submit and even put myself at risk of not having things like I want them, the time I want them, the way that I want them, if the other path displeases the Father. Now, I'll be, now I'm going to tell you something. I um, took Shannon's, we took Shannon's little Fiat. She's got a little Fiat 500, you know, the little bubble car. Now, I personally told her, I said, look, we could put a riding lawnmower deck under that. It's got a zero turning radius. We could cut the grass with it. I mean, you know, we could zip around the yard in your little Fiat thing there and cut the grass with it. Well, she had to get something done, so we took it in the store, and they had the 2017 Fiat 124 Sports Spider in there. I went and sat in it. That's a mistake. Because, see, when I was, when I was uh, dating Janie, I had a 124 Spider. And uh, the five-speed, you know, but this one, I'm telling you, I got out. I almost got stuck to the seat. There was so much honey in it because it's so sweet. Oh, Lord. Now, listen. <laughs> I could go down and rob a bank and go buy it. That's not going to please God. Probably not going to please the bank. And certainly not going to please my wife having to come visit me behind glass doors. Now, there's a way for me to get it that's not pleasing to God. I can't go that path because it dishonors my father. Hello? I have to go the path of in the right season. Listen, I'm not even putting my faith on it now. I got other things that my faith is on. I, I'm, you know, you get stretched out at a certain point, you don't need to add something else that's not necessary. I'd like to have it. I'll be honest with you. I'd love to have it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my, 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 my. And then I, they don't make it in British Racing Green. I'd want to take it to a body shop and have them strip it and paint it British Racing Green. Because that's the color my Fiat 124 was back in the, my, my 74. My, I had a 74 Spider. It was British race green with tan interior. Ooh, it was nice. Jamie, I dated in that car. Put my little British rider hat on. Put the Bee Gees in. Had an 8-track. Yeah, pre-disco. I mean, it's how deep is your love and, you know, and how can you, all that anyway. 
the hat. I was styling, baby. Yeah. Mama loved it. So you yeah, look. See, that's my man. Hallelujah. How did I get out? Oh, so <clears throat> there, there's ways to get things that aren't right. There's ways to do things that aren't right. There's paths to achievements that aren't right. And as Christians, we have to choose the path that is godly, that is righteous, that honors the Father and how we do things. Amen. We have to live and do and make decisions, even if it's seemingly to our detriment at the time. Let me say this. No matter, you know, Jesus said, no man has left father, mother, lands, houses, and for my sake, they will not receive a hundredfold in this life. What's he saying? When you give up for him what's the seemingly easy path to get where you want, to honor him, to please him, to live that life of faith, he'll bless you and, return, and cause return to come to you in spite of the fact it looked like it hurt you. Now, Dad told the story. Well, actually, I can tell my own story. Dad hasn't told the story. I can tell my own. Janie and I got married. Now, Janie and I, when we first got married, I was working at Parker's Barbecue for $4.50 an hour. She was working at Hollowell's Drug Store for four twenty five an hour. That's a lot of money. Not. I had sold my Fiat Spider to go to Rayma. I was driving an AMC Gremlin. You know what a Gremlin is? Look it up in the dictionary. It's a demon. I come down the road going, demon car, demon car. It had little demon imps all over the thing. It was demon. It was possessed. The windshield wipers were vacuuming. They had a hole in it. You had to turn them off and let it get enough suction in it to pull them up one time when you're riding down the road and turn them back off. I went from Little Rock, Arkansas to Tulsa one time in the middle of a heavy rain like this for hours going. By the time I got to Tulsa, my back hurt so back. Come out. Windshield, windshield wiper demon. She had a Toyota that we parked under a mulberry tree that the mulberry, the birds ate, the mulberries that dropped on the car, kind of red stuff all over it. I got pulled by the police. Wonder where all that blood came from. <laughs> I am not joking you. I mean, I'm riding down the road this day. I know I'm, under, I'm not speeding or anything. Here comes the police. Whoop, 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 whoop. Sir, where'd that blood come from? What? Oh, we park under a mulberry bush. The birds drop on it. They go back there and look. Okay, you're right. <laughs> I almost ended up in jail over bird poop. And, and we had friends getting married. Janie had friends that weren't even married. They were all buying houses, and she wanted a home. You know, what, what, what woman doesn't want their home and stuff, you know? And, and I'd heard Dad Hagen's story. told the sister, Rita, you stick with me. You'll have, you'll have all the blessings. See, Janie, Janie didn't grow up any kind of privilege. She could look through the floor of the house and see chickens under the house. They didn't have heat in there. They had one room that had an oil heater in it, they, they slept in bedrooms that were so cold they could see the, the breath con condensation when they were laying in bed. They'd have to get in so many blankets they couldn't move. So she didn't, she didn't grow up rich. Her daddy, her daddy was an alcoholic most of her early childhood. Well, when actually, until some years after we got married, he, when he, he, he stopped. He was drunk every weekend and two or three times a year, two weeks at a time. They used to drop stuff out the bottom of the floor while they're riding down the road of the car and turn around and look at it bounce as they rode down the road. There's a, there's a kid, I get, there's a Flintstone mobile, baby. They drop rocks and stuff and then jump up to look out the back window and see it bouncing on the road. She wanted, and then we got married, we moved into the house she was living. Now, this wasn't the same house, you can see through the floor. But there was an old Victorian house that they had turned into an apartment upstairs that they lived, the family lived downstairs. When we got married, we got the upstairs apartment. We're not making hardly anything. We can't buy a house. Her friends, friends are getting married. They're getting houses. They're right, driving 280Zs and, or 240Zs back then, 240Zs. All kinds of cool cars, houses. And she's crying when I said, honey, you stick with me. We're going to obey God. We're going to do what God said to do. We're going to walk with God, and God's going to bless us because of it. The sacrifices we're making on this end. See, I was a computer programmer. But I, I wouldn't take a job as a computer programmer and miss church on Sundays.
because my calling was to the church and not to the to programming computers. And at that time, I had to work Sundays if I, if I, was, if I worked in a computer shop. That's the only way I could do it. I had to work on Sundays. You know, because they would hire you as an operator, then work in over time. That's Eastern Carolina. That's the whole culture down there. Little IBM back then, three, uh, System 3s, and then moved to the 36s, 38s, and then now the AS400s. Same concepts, that small shop for computers running RPG. And I was, I couldn't, they couldn't get a job because I wouldn't work Sundays. If I, if I, if I worked, if I took a job, I had to work Sundays and Wednesday nights. I couldn't be in church and go for the ministry. So I'm back for, at the old restaurant I worked at before I went to Bible school cooking chickens. Aren't y'all glad I know how to cook fried chicken? In Eastern Carolina, barbecue. Ha! Mm. Have you, how many have not had my barbecue and fried chicken? You have, Melanie. Not, I ain't talking about today. I'm talking about ever. Where's Jeff? I'll call your husband in here. I'm messing on you. I said, you stick with me. And then Janie got, you know, she got pregnant. She got a job. She got a good, good job. She was making more money than me uh, at uh, North State Bank at the time. And um, then she got pregnant, had Jessica. And two weeks after she got, got back to work, she quit. She, she went to right. So we went from double salary to half salary. That's, that's, that's you know, but we made a decision. We're going to raise our children. Now listen, I'm not telling you you're wrong if you do something different. I'm telling you what we did. This is what God told us. This is what we had in our heart to do. About eight months later, we're in Greensboro pastoring. We're the pastors of a church. Well, not, well, ten months after Jesse was born, we, we came to Greensboro to pastor. Instantly, the, the, our, we went back to what we were making together, which still wasn't a lot of money, but it was, you know. But you know what? Two years later, we had our own home. Vicki Jameson came in and, and, and told Jess, Janie, you're going to get your dream. She said, you're going to have your dream. And we got the house. And then years later, we got the other house that we're still in. Now, Satan has tried to come after that house. He's, still, he's been coming after that since we've been there. It's my house. He can't have my house. He's not getting my house. I'm not going under. We're going over. But what am I saying? During the time, it looked like everybody else was doing great. Now, let me say some of the friends that we, that we had that were doing so great are divorced. The wife doesn't serve God, curses God now. I'm not saying that, you know, having a house is wrong. But I'm saying we cannot get caught up with looking at what other people have and what other people do and not follow the path that God has for us to follow. Because in the end, God will honor and God will reward your acts of faith, your willingness, and your obedience to do what he said do. God will honor why? Because God is faithful. And he, ne he said, if you leave a father, a mother, a house, home, land, whatever, for my sake. Now, not just doing it just to do it, but he, that's, what he, that's what he wants out of you. But he's going to reward you. And he's going to return. Why? Because we have a covenant. I said we have a covenant with a God who said, I'll bless you and bless you. I'll, but he expects your faith which is demonstrated in willingness and obedience. Yes, you're going to use your prayer of faith to believe and receive and get things. You know, I believe I receive this need met. Yeah, that, that's the prayer of faith. Prayer believe and receive. We get that. But that daily life is going to be willing and obedience all the time. God's going to ask you to do stuff. He asked Abraham. He didn't test him to evil. He tested to see if he would uphold his end of the covenant. And because he upheld his end of the covenant, Jesus came. God's going to ask you to do stuff. I said, God's going to ask you to do stuff. Now, we don't like to hear this under the narratives that no matter what I do, I get blessed. But let me, I'm going to say this. If we can't remain faithful when it ain't easy, for, you are, you're not faithful. Anybody can be faithful when it's easy. Anybody can do when it's easy. Hello? I could take and go in there and put a styrofoam weight bar in there with a couple of styrofoam round weights on it. 
weighing about three pounds max. And anybody in this room could lift it. Probably the babies could lift it. That's easy. Let's throw the bar out there and cut a couple of 40,000 on each side. Let's see who's going to go do that. That's not as easy. I said, that's not as easy. And there are things that God asked a hard thing of Abraham. He said, give me your son. Now, when Abraham's just out there with Lot, and they're out there in the, in the desert outside of Sodom and Gomorrah, and uh, <clears throat> they just keep multiplying and prospering so much so the land can't bear them. They're getting so blessed, the blessing's too much for the land to handle. Basically, you reach your $100,000 mark in your bank account, the FDIC won't cover it anymore. Over the 100000 And so God, Abraham goes to Lot and says, well, Land can't you choose where you want, I'll go somewhere else. Lot chooses the nice, green, fertile land next to Sodom. Abraham gets the deserty, junky land, and he goes out and he gets blessed out there because he's got a covenant. Amen? God may ask you to go to a place you're not, you're not willing to go. You don't want to go. You've got to become willing, and you've got to obey. God may ask you to go, go do something. Give this. But, Lord, that's, you know, that's, that's to my detriment. That, that's my boat money. Honey, if you give up your boat money, God will get you a better boat. Now, I, I said all this. I believe I'm going to have another Fiat 124 Spider. Now, I was always looking for the retro ones because they didn't make them anymore. They stopped making them in 83. You didn't, they, didn't, they weren't produced after 83. But when they announced last year they're coming out with a brand new one, if Fiat's going to reintroduce the 124, I was like, Forget the Z3, 124 is for me. I'm telling you. Because I was wanting the Z3. You know, I, wanted to be, I like a little convertibles. But I believe God's going to bless me eventually. I don't know when. I, and I'm not going to try to go up to rich people and say, Hey, you know that 30000 you got in the bank? That'll buy my Fiat. Or, you know how much it costs to get a spider? And you know what God will do for somebody that buys the pastor a Fiat Spider? Man, they're going to have supernatural debt cancellation. You've got to give up to the higher anointing to get blessed anyway, brother. You know? See, that's manipulation. That's not God. I said, that's not God. But what God will do is he'll honor what I did. And at some point in all this, it's coming my way. See, all the time I was, I really never could get settled on the Z3 I, want, I, I like to have one because I didn't have a Fiat 120. When they introduced it, I know this. God is going to give me the new one. Going to get it better. I sat in it. If the key had been in it, I think I would have drove right through the glass doors and drove right on down the road with it. Oh, my, it was sweet. Oh, it's sweet. But I didn't give that up to go to Bible school, and God didn't take note. I know he's going to honor it. When? That's in his timetable. I said, that's in his timetable. My wife, we didn't get a house when we first got married. We've been married almost seven years before we got our first home. We rented. There's nothing wrong with renting, but she wanted a home of her own. She wanted something she could paint the walls and decorate. Didn't want to have a house that you can't paint the wall that color. It's got to stay antique white. With antique white trim. Can't you guys choose white and white? I mean, something, you know, just something with a little more pizzazz to it than that yellowish. I hate that color. Now, you may love it. I hate it. Hate that color combination. It's dull. I don't like it. Trust me. Neither does my wife. Seven years. Seven years. And we're being faithful to God, driving little demon cars around, getting almost arrested because it's got blood on the back of the car. Finally bought a car. Finally bought a car that was nicer, a 1984 Citation with 90,000 miles on it. Almost drove Jamie over the Watauga Dam. We got to sort of turn out near the Watauga Dam. I jumped out, left it in gear, and was looking at the view, and all of a sudden the car was going off to the edge of the mountain. And I was looking there, she's with them little short legs trying to reach over there and hit the brake. <laughs> They're about that sharp, far too short to hit the brake from where she was sitting. 
When you're in covenant with God, you can trust God to do what he said he would do. Amen. You can trust God to bless. You can trust God. It's 11:23 in Tennessee. Now, <laughs> we're going to wrap up. We're going to continue this next week, but Jesus is who this promise was made. God cannot refuse to honor his covenant with Jesus. So that's why I stay right and stay out of sin and stay in good relation with him because when I'm in Christ, I'm the, I, I receive all the promises of God made according to that covenant. I'm in a covenant relationship. My covenant mindset will not let me live crossways of what God says to live. Believe it or not, God has a moral code. Now, the law has that moral code in it. We don't live by law, but that moral code reveals what God expects. Amen? Hallelujah. Call you blessed and favored of the Lord. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.